Uh, for the Queen, by the way, Kendall has like one of the coolest instruction mechanics I think I've ever seen of any game. Um, there are cards you read through, and it follows the same mechanics for the main part of the game, too. So I will start. Uh, go around the table clockwise, taking turns reading these cards aloud. And then we'll go to Sarah, and then we'll go to Kendall. Okay. The land you live in has been at war for as long as any of you have been alive. The queen has decided to undertake a long and perilous journey to broker an alliance with a distant power. The queen has chosen all of you and no one else to be her retinue and accompany her on this journey. She chose you because she knows that you love her. You are welcome to look through the queen cards for inspiration. If there is one that seems right for the group, place it on the table to inspire your story. Okay, so let's go over to the queens. <clears throat> and then there's a bunch that are on here. I'll just start dropping some in here. And then if there's one that uh, seems interesting to us, we can go with that one. I like that one. There you go. That's it. This is the one right here? That inspires love. Okay. Because it's basically a female Tim Curry. I like it. But um Good talk. <laughs> okay. Game over. I won. Uh, I like it. Okay. And then we'll continue on. Uh, set the card that reads, the queen is under attack. Do you defend her? Aside. And we've already taken care of that part, so we're good. Shuffle the red prompt cards and place them face down in the center of the table. Put there the queen is under attack card in the middle of the deck for a game that takes approximately 30 minutes or shuffle it into the bottom third of the deck to play for an hour or more. When you have read the instruction cards, continue clockwise with the red prompt cards. Take turns reading the questions out loud. Interpret these questions and answer them however you wish. Other players may ask you questions or make suggestions on your turn, but whether you answer those questions or include those suggestions is entirely up to you. Place the X card somewhere everyone can easily reach it. And that is the purple X card we have right next to our queen here. If you encounter a card or an answer that you don't want to be included in the game, tap the X card. That content is removed from the game. If you draw a card that is removed this way, simply draw another card. You can X a card that you drew yourself. You can also pass on your turn. To do so, give the prompt card you drew to the next player and say, I'd like to hear your answer to this question. Like a true punting ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happened last game. Uh, a prompt card can be passed around the table until someone applies the X card to it. Continue answering, passing, and Xing questions until the queen is under attack card is drawn. Each player should answer that question in turn, then the game is over. And finally, whoever wants to draw the first prompt card. I'll do it. Okay. Um, if you want, uh, it's easier for you guys, so you guys don't have to worry with the uh, the mouse. I can keep pulling cards if you like. Okay. Cool. That works for me. Okay. And Mr. Kendall. Mm, you think of someone in this retinue as the queen's favorite. Who? What makes you think that? Hmm. Well, I mean, we're all we all love the queen. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, that's why we're here. 
but not necessarily but, openly. We may not all know that we love the queen, but the queen knows that we love her. Queen knows that we love her. Mm -hmm. And that is the face of a woman who inspires love. Right. Mm -hmm. Inspires all the love. All the loves of all the kinds. I would say I feel like Anthony is the queen's favorite. Um, and Anthony is the queen's favorite. I mean, obviously. Um, I think that this is the case. I think Anthony is the queen's favorite. I think he is the queen's favorite because um, every time the, the queen speaks to him, they're a little closer than I am. And I don't, I haven't noticed anybody else getting as physically close to the queen as Anthony. So I think that there's, there's some favoritism going on there and I'm a little jealous. I like it. Okay. So I got this one. What part of this journey will be the most difficult? How do you pull the rest of the retinue through it? Uh, well, you know, this also kind of goes into to why I'm so close with the Queen all the time. Uh, we're old. Uh, I'm I'm her battle master of 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 the Queen's queendom, and um, and we've been through many battles and wars together. And one of the reasons she brought me along is not just because I love her, but also because the uh, the journey uh, we're beset uh, by our enemies that are trying to prevent us from brokering this peace deal. Uh, and how do I pull the rest of the retinue through? Uh, by brute force. So a lot of these folks that are with us, you know, they're soft and they're weak, um, you know, but I'm going to force them through because it's what the queen demands. Do you have a peg leg? Just checking. Absolutely not. No, that, that okay. would, that would, that, that would, that would insinuate that I've lost it somehow and that somebody like hurt me. That's not, sorry. You were summoned to a private meeting with the queen once. Why did you feel disappointed afterward? Mm. I felt disappointed because she told me I wasn't fit to rule after her because I'm her daughter. Oh. Walk twist. Yes. And she only summoned you to a private meeting once. What? <laughs> once. Once. Yeah. I was summoned to a private meeting once. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Well, she's a busy lady. Wow. It's, it's understandable. Okay. Uh, you know why? Because you don't look like your mother. You have nice white wings. Well, we're not. We're not there yet. I might come up later. Here you go, Kendall. <clears throat> what promise did the queen make to you before this journey? And do I think she'll keep it? The queen promised me, prior to this journey, prior to this journey even coming up, and having that discussion, because it was just before the journey, not necessarily tied to the journey. Um, she was discussing the possibility of me marrying into the family. <laughs> mm. And, uh, and so she promised me that upon our, or that, that um, within the, the come spring that um, she would have, she will decide uh, who within her family would would be my bride? Mm. Do I think she'll keep it? Uh, I do. I do. I have done a lot of service for this queen. Mm. And she's she she's, she stood by you solid. She has. I have. I've stood by her. She's going to stand by me. Nice. Plus, I've got a double chin, so uh, you know it goes a long way. Uh, the queen gave you a compliment once uh what? what was it and why have her words stayed with you uh the compliment that she gave me was that let's see, i don't want to go with the the readily obvious um was was that i had a keen eye for for art and this was one this was in one of our many uh you know conquer car, conqueration nations of uh of the queendom and uh we had we had taken over uh, the you know the keep of one of these lords and in our armies as is wont to do was getting ready to just burn and pillage and steal everything and I had taken note of of a particular uh, painting that that kind of caught my eye just because it, I thought it looked nice and apparently it was something that was of of worth or note to the queen and she paid me a compliment and that that stayed with me because it showed me that the queen was more than about just warfare and and slaughter and conquering. And there you go. 
When did you know you were in love with the queen? With your mother. With my mother. Yeah. With the Oedipus. Doesn't have I to be say, I've always loved her. Yeah. I may have, like, you know, fallen out of love and been back in and stuff a little bit because, you know, teenage years and whatnot. But, um. Was there a moment I... that, like, solidified it for you? When did you know? When did I know? Like, this last time? She's going to give me a second chance to prove myself. Mm. And that's that's when I knew mm. that she wasn't, or that, that she really cared about me. Mm. And because she cared about me, I cared about her. Yeah, was somebody worthy of the love. Yeah. That's good. Okay. What makes the queen beautiful in my eye? Um, so do you have an eye patch? No, she's got two really huge horns. Mm -hmm. And uh, in uh, they, they are they are beyond any any set of horns that you. I mean, it's clearly clearly royalty. Um, just the horns in and of themselves denote um, her station, but she has maintained them so beautifully um, that they they really draw the eye. Um, she constantly has to tell many people. Um, that her eyes are down here, and um, yeah, it's it, they're 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 impressive. Mm -hmm. Our horns a common feature in people in our queendom. Yes, mm. but hers are mighty. Hers are hers are. You, you will not find a better rack <laughs> of horns. Of horn. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, what brings out the queen's kindness? Um, she has a, a particular love for um, uh, for like the 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 slower the slower um, like house care not like tending a house but more like decorating. Uh, she she sees a part of it as you know there's this large part of her life that goes out and is not necessarily destroying things but but a side effect of what she's doing tends to destroy things. And she takes a small solace in being able to have her own personal space and appreciate other people's personal space when they can see that they have taken care of it and, and they do care about it. And that brings, that just kind of naturally warms her normally, as you can see by the picture here, by her official uh, monarch portrait uh, that hangs above above her massive you know castle wall to intimidate others. And then, of course, she's standing directly below it with the exact same face. But, um, but those are like those brief moments where her kindness and, and the warmth shows through. The queen trusts you, mm. but no one else in the royal court does. Why? Hmm. Because the reason she originally told me I was not worthy was because I kept sneaking out of the castle to meet someone. Uh, and to this day, you haven't been able to figure out who it was. And that's why the queen trusts you? Yep. Because you could keep it secret? Well, no, she trusts me because I'm her daughter. Well, yeah. But nobody else trusts oh, me. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, yep, that's why. Yeah. Because okay. you could have been meeting with a traitorous person. Mm -hmm. I could be plotting her doom. Mm -hmm. Probably are. You were yeah, deemed absolutely. unworthy, you know. Yep. We're wasting time. Okay, what do you do that pleases the queen on this journey? Um... Well, so that this this journey is very important to peace in the realms, um, and kind of a different tack than she has taken previously, because she has been very focused more on the uh, warrior queen aspect of conquering. Um, but but we really do need to settle out of that and, and, and transition into peace. She's getting on an age. And um, I didn't say that. That's not true. <laughs> but, you see that we're actually smoking. Um, what do you do that pleases the queen on this journey? So what I do as we as we go through the tra our travels is I discuss with the queen what my plans are to transition our economy from a war-based economy to a, a peacetime economy. So trade and, um, you know, uh, uh, transportation, 
um, stabilization of you know the cities that are under under our our flag, um, you know pacification that sort of stuff. I'm I'm kind of bringing that up, and it pleases her that we talk about it because nobody really talks to her about long term future or even mid term future. It's very mm-hmm. short term. Like everything has been very much go and do this thing. Okay, I did it. Now I'm going to go do this thing, mm-hmm. and it's the next step and not the next ten steps. Yep. So we're talking about the next 10 steps ahead, and she uh, she responds to that well. I like it. Okay. Uh, why are some others at the royal court jealous of your relationship with the queen? Well, I think that's the, you know the main way you get into the court is it's it's primarily, especially like Kendall just mentioned, it's a lot of like generals and military leaders and officers and things like that, or, or even you know lower soldiers that have proven their worth. Uh, and that's who she naturally surrounds herself with these these military minds and and I am the one and only war master uh, or the battle master and so the constantly there's probably attempts on my life to be able to and this is just normal it's just normal you know if if I can't defend myself and protect myself then what use am I to the queen and so so yeah everybody at the royal court hates me just straight up. There used to be 20 battle masters, but you guys played King of the Mountain. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. And, it was, uh, it was because, on pay per view. Yep. Yep. And then, and then you went Highlander on the last three. I did. So there can be only one. There can be only one, and it's me. What do you do usually, or what do you usually do for the royal family? Live. <laughs> Why does that make you an unlikely <laughs> choice for this journey? Because you might die. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say I'm her only daughter, and mm-hmm. as this is a queendom, it's, you know, it passes from mm-hmm. mother to daughter. Usually. Um, you're going to marry one of my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the family. Uh, and that makes me an unlikely choice, mm. because she has taken me out of, she's taken me out of the kingdom with her, so like our entire queendom's future is on this journey I like it okay the queen thinks more highly of me than i do of myself how do i know this well so to anthony's anthony's point earlier um you know most of her most of her retinue is martial based they're they're from the military they've, they've come up through purely physical means. Um, and I'm a, I'm a merchant Marine. So I, I'm both a merchant and I've fought on the seas before, mm-hmm. but I'm not strictly combat based. I've, I've also worked on commerce and, uh, you know, gotten supplies for people for, for the armies as we we've, we've traversed. Um, and I'm like the only one here. So I don't really look at my, I don't measure my, feel like I measure up to the rest of the, the martial classes in the retinue Mm -hmm. of a conquering queen. Uh, But she still has me come and, and, uh, you know, advise her on certain things. Mm -hmm. Um, She trusts me to come on this trip. Um, I I wouldn't really have, I wouldn't have thought that I would, I would have been invited on this Mm -hmm. in spite of all the discussions we've had prior to this, this journey. Um, and so I, I think that she does think higher of me than maybe I, I do of myself. Mm-hmm. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, you are considered <laughs> ugly by almost everyone you meet. How does the queen make you question that perception? So yeah, I'm, um, while I do have both my legs, I do not have a pig leg. I, I am like horribly scarred from decades of fighting and battle and, and acting as the queen's hand and, and going out and doing all this stuff. And I've just gotten so scarred and disfigured. You know, I, I look like probably one of my horns is like chopped off and the other one is like gnarled and, and, you know, chipped. And, and, and that is, a you know, great stark difference to everybody else, especially at the court who grooms themselves really nicely and, and tries to look as best as possible. And I don't make any time for that. And the queen, the, the more I seem to get worn down by my service and duty, the more that the queen has, has held me up as a sign of this is what, this is what is important. And, uh, and that has kind of, kind of grabbed me. It's one of the many reasons that I, that I love our queen.
What did you bring with you to protect the queen? I brought poison to, pr to protect, protect her queen. because protect the hell out of her. Yes, like because it. I don't trust anyone. <laughs> and if I think someone is plotting against her, I'm going to poison them before they can act. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, can dig it. You can see why she left you out in the cold for so long. <laughs> You sometimes think you might be the queen's favorite. Why? And why does this worry me? Mm. It's very fleeting that I think that I'm the favorite. Like, it's not common. <laughs> I believe I already mentioned who I thought the favorite was. I'm not going to contradict that by saying that I'm the favorite because I don't feel like it most of the time. But every once in a while, I feel like maybe I have the most favorite at the moment. Momentary favor. Um, sometimes it's just in the way that the queen responds to some of the discussions we have like clearly she she absorbs what i'm saying and then applies that through her queenly filter to to so that it makes sense for the kingdom and not just out of my my you know merchant marine head um sometimes sometimes i'm concerned about that because you know i'm i'm one voice out of many and, uh, you know, more people together generally work better in terms of coming up with ideas that, that will benefit the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And I'm con it does concern me that maybe my voice might be more outsized in certain areas mm -hmm. than it should be. I should have more people in the discussion, but maybe the queen is, can sometimes take what I say and run with it. Mm -hmm. then you're, concerns you're me. I've seen anything that yeah. come from it, but it concerns me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you do to disappoint the queen on this journey? Yeah, I think, favorite. Yeah, well, I, I didn't say I was the favorite. Um, yeah. I, I think at some point during the journey, um, the 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 princess maybe goes like a little too far out, maybe on one of her forays to talk to the mystery friend. Um, and and I'm of course a watchful eye. It's just the four of us on this journey. This is this is the retinue. This is who the queen brought with her, and I, I think the queen would just be crushed if the princess were to go off and then get herself killed, being as as weak and as soft as she is. And so I think at one point, you know, the, the princess got a little too far off, and maybe I scolded her a little too harshly, and the queen saw this, and there was this. You know, she didn't see that I was trying to protect her. She saw that like, I, I hard to tell she had that same look that she does right now on that picture there <laughs> with those very piercing and almost disappointing eyes of, you know, and I'm, I'm not exactly sure why she would have been this disappointed. I was maybe a little bit confused by it. I, I still think I did the right thing, but um, the queen certainly doesn't seem to think so for whatever reason. Hmm. There is a part of you that does not want peace in this land. Why are you attached mm. to the war? You know, my mother made her name and she built this nation on war. And that's the thing that impresses her. Um, and, and I kind of want my own chance to prove myself in battle. So you got to keep it going. Yeah. What makes the queen ugly in my eyes? Sometimes, um, it's, it, it seems like it, it's an ugly weakness in her to give people 15th chances. Okay. When did you know you would never forgive the queen and why? Sarah, I would like to see the princess answer this question. <laughs> mm. It feels like there's something there. I, I want I want to see yeah. 
You can pass it on to Kendall if you want to, but I just, I'm curious. She made me cut my horns. Um, she was very displeased with me, told me I was not worthy, and I had to cut my horns. And I, I can't forgive her for that. That was such a blow to me. Not just the not being worthy, but then also having, like, being uh, disfigured. Dis disfigured. Yeah. Yeah. Is that uncommon? Does it show you as like a member of a like exiled class or something, or in our queendom? I, I think maybe it's a sign of criminals. Oh. If, you, it's, if you're guilty of something, then one of the things you have to do, depending on the severity of the crime is mm -hmm. cut your horns off. Wow. Do they ever grow back? Yes. Okay. Are yours back? Hmm. That's you. Mm -hmm. The fuck it is. <laughs> <laughs> You can always pass it if you want to, Kendall. Yeah, I'm going to pass. You're going to pass? Yeah. Oh, you arranged for the queen to be ambushed on this journey. What did they offer you? Um, well, they offered the opportunity for the queen to see the error of her ways. So she is a warring queen. She has built her queendom on warring. And now she has decided for whatever reason that she needs peace with this, with this other country that we were power that we're at war with for, for years and years. And I feel like if we can win this, this will just reestablish not just our queendom, but also remind the queen of who she is. And what they offered, what they offered me was the opportunity to turn my queen's head around and pull her head out of her prover proverbial butt. <laughs> That's what they offered me. So, and I know in the end, hey, maybe she might not like me. Maybe she'll kill me, but but all's good if we can get her back on the path. Doing it for the country. That's right, for her, not for the country. Doing it for her. Yeah. Are you in love with her? Yes, I am. We established yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do you think the queen trusts you enough to bring you on this journey? Uh, so before we came on the journey, we had a little heart to heart, mother daughter talk. Mm. Um, and you know, things got a little personal and, and I found out some things about her history that nobody else knows. Mm. So I know that she trusts me. Mm. Were those things you could have done something with and you decided not to kind of a thing? Yeah. Okay. Like things that if they they came out, maybe people would not look so kindly upon them. Mm -hmm. And she knows. I like it. Okay. How does the queen remind me of her status while oh. on the journey? Well, I mean, um, she she does ride a horse. <laughs> And uh, is it a I horse or, or was it was like one of the, like you know you know like the longhorn? Uh, it's a yeah, like you know with with the yeah, like the enormous stag. horns, like battle yeah. horns. Yeah, yeah. So I got like a battle stag with like okay. armor, you know, like armored, you know, covering on it. Yeah. And uh, and I don't. I ride a um, I ride a, a large goat. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you know, I mean it. They could probably do some damage and stuff, but like it's clearly it's it's a it's for riding, not for mm -hmm. murdering. Um, and you know, even even the the princess, the, the exiled princess, has a I'm not exiled. Yeah, the, the disowned princess. <laughs> um, not disowned either. Even the disfigured princess has a. They've uh, grown back at this point. For fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's really how I'm reminded. <laughs> I like it. Okay. 
It's not just that the queen thinks that, it's that the princess constantly belittles me and doesn't, the queen doesn't say anything. <laughs> mm. I like it. Uh, the I queen... I'd rather you be perfect for. Mm -hmm. Not your problem. Mm -hmm. How do you know? The queen lights a fire in you. What is it? Ooh. So I think... Um, I think maybe in my younger days, I was actually uh, one of the queen's consorts like a long time ago. And I think this was, you know, amidst all of the, you know, the, the battle and the conquering and, and all of that, what actually really made me connect with the queen was how she treated not just her own people, but the people that we conquered. Um, she, she took them in as, as her own and saw them as her people. And, and that's maybe part of the reason why she was conquering all the time is she saw the world as her people and only rightly so that they be under her rule, but she didn't do it as a possession kind of a thing. It was very, it was a very personal connection. And that made me see, especially in the early days where it was all just battle and fighting, that there was more to this person, um, that there was real, you know, connection, engagement. There's, there was a personality, a soul there that, that, uh, that caught me. The queen is responsible for the death of someone you loved. Who and what happened? I'm going to say... The queen killed my father. Mm. Uh, he was also one of her earlier consorts, but he was not one of the battle people. Um, which is part of why, you know, she felt I might not be worthy. Mm. Um, but it happened in their bedchambers, and nobody knows exactly what happened, but it sure looked like she just killed him in his sleep. Mm. Mm. I saved the queen's life once. How? Um, so the queen was sailing, um, with, uh, several ships, uh, mine amongst them, um, to, an, uh, to a, one of the smaller outlying islands, um, to bring it to heel. And, um, a storm came up and we were, we were, most of the ships were destroyed by the giant, gigantic waves, um, including the ship she was on. Um, and my ship was one of two that survived and I, I dove into the waters to save her. Can you swim? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm a merchant marine. Fuck, I better be able to swim. Hey, <laughs> hey maybe there's like ropes on the boat. I don't know. Now, and you know, also what's nice is um, the horns are pretty buoyant. Mm. Okay. Um, this is a quite this is a you are considered beautiful by almost everyone you meet. How does the queen make you per question that perception? I had the reverse, so I'm actually going to pass this on to Sarah. Mm. Um, she never has a nice thing to say about my appearance. Mm. I'm always, you know, I am not wearing the right color, or you know, I'm supposed to be wearing armor instead of court clothes mm. I, I just can't do anything right can't get it, it right. seems like mm -hmm. as it comes to like my personal image mm -hmm. I'm, I'm already picturing a very toxic relationship <laughs> like this is not this is not a healthy mother-daughter relationship for so many, for so many reasons yeah I'll poison you all mm -hmm. yeah your poison is called therapy mm -hmm. <laughs> um what brings out the queen's cruelty? Uh, reciprocal cruelty. So she goes in somewhere as she's been conquering, right? She'll come upon, um, you know, duckies that she's conquered where the previous rulers were, um, were sadistic or they were, they were malignant towards their, their people. Mm -hmm. And, um, so she visited like upon them, uh, um, even when it was distasteful to her personally, she still dealt equal um, right back to the people that were doing the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, somebody has been starving the peasants, then they would brick them up. She would brick them up in a, in a wall 
um, and let them starve to death and listen to their screams as they slowly died from starvation. Mm. Actually, they probably ran out of air first. Cool story. Thanks for that. That's super awesome. Okay. Uh, you have a personal connection to the land you're currently traveling through. What makes you want to stay and why don't you? Um, I have a feeling like this is this is maybe some territory from from our early days that we had conquered and then and then lost and then it precipitated the larger war that we're at now and it's it's been a back and forth this whole time and I I really want to I really want to stay because there there was a period very early where when we conquered this land things were settled for a little while and I was um I was not at war and normally that would that would unsettle me as a whole but but there was a like a, a family that i had met and helped uh, again following the the example of the queen and and after we conquered the land i was like a warden of of the territory and i just found myself kept kept coming back to this this family and i'd have dinner with them and i would stay with them and i i know that they're here and i would i would love to go and see them again it's been years and I, I don't even know if they're still alive um but i i can't stay because i'm on a mission it, it tears at me they're like they're probably just a couple miles over that way and i could go and see them but I, I can't i can't abandon my duty so is this is the war that we're in right now a civil war mm, i don't think it's necessarily a civil oh, yeah. war it could be What do you do for the queen that no one else can do? She knows that I will love her no matter what she tells me. Mm. And so she can divest herself of her regrets and her worries, uh, knowing that I'm not going to... Where's my... It sounds like you're, it sounds like you're saying she doesn't she doesn't have to be an actual mother to you and and she knows you, you'll still love her. Yeah, no, I'm I'm her therapy doll. <laughs> okay. The queen touched me once. <laughs> once. What about the memory of that will stay with me forever? Mm -hmm. Um. After I saved her, um, she called me to her chambers and she came up to me and she put her hand on my cheek and she said, from this day forward, I will make of you a daughter. And uh, so part of that, those, those kind of discussions and everything from that point on has always resolved around that, that moment. Mm -hmm. When was the last time the queen showed you real kindness? Um, I, I think it was the day that I stopped being her consort. We were probably, uh, you know, fresh off a campaign and, um, and there was some downtime. It may even been during that time in between, I'd probably say this is just in between some random wars that happen all the time. Um, and, and I was getting to know her more personally. We were doing things that were more social in nature. And I realized that I was precipitating the queen's weakness. And I didn't like that. Weakness, of course, meaning we're not at war and she's not fighting. And I personally see that as her battle master as weakness, right or wrong. Um, and so I, I cut things off with her to stop her from going down that path. And that was that day was the last time that she's ever showed me actual, real, queenly person kindness. I'm gonna pass this one. Okay, Kendall. There's no one else in this retinue I love besides the queen. How and why am I keeping it a secret? Because opposites attract. 
Also, I don't want to get poisoned. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can also pass this question too if you don't if you don't like it, Kendall. No, I'm good with it. Okay. So, who do you love um, beside the queen? Oh, let's Sarah. Okay. My, sar my sarcastic answer was actually my real answer too. Gotcha. And then how uh, and how and why are you keeping it a secret? How and why am I keeping it a secret? Well, I'm, I never, I've never professed it. Um, I, I've never spoken it. Um, sometimes maybe my look lingers a little long, but that could be for a lot of reasons. So I assume people will probably write it off. Hey, I'm good looking. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, you're just made to be looked at. Um, but, uh, how and why am I keeping it a secret? So how I am is, is, is I don't talk about it. I don't, I don't, I don't discuss it. I don't entertain it. Um, and why am I keeping it a secret? Because, um, I mean, all of the reasons that, that she's a terrible choice to be a, a, an heir um, are also some of the reasons that draw her to me. She's rebellious. She's a free spirit. Um, you know, she, she still engenders, for some reason unbeknownst to me, she engenders trust in a queen that has given her 4,000 chances to redeem herself. And not really, not really earned it. Um, and, and so I don't want to be drawn into that. But I also, I just, it's like a moth to flame mm -hmm. to a certain degree. I will burn you. Yep. <laughs> or poison. Oh, I'm the moth. First. In this situation, I would be the poisoned moth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You suspect this journey isn't just about diplomatic negotiations. What else do you believe is going on and why? I think, I personally think, as her battle master, that the queen is trying to end. And Kendall, I liked your 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 potential addition there of of a um, a civil war. You know, maybe that one of her one of her generals has you know risen up against her and and is now you know flocked a lot to to his cause, his or her cause. And I I think the other part of this that's going on is that the queen is going to try to arrange a, a marriage. Uh, she's been she's been without a consort for quite some time. She has not had a maybe ever an actual matching partner. And I think what she's going to do is she's going to try to broach a piece by having a um, a marriage with with the um, uh, with the the general who's leading the civil war on the opposing side. You saw the queen do something terrible to keep the retinue safe. What was it? Did you come to respect her more or less afterward? I'm going to say you can exit too. I know. No, I, I like this. I'm just trying to think of what would go fast. Uh, um, we, we got to a portion of the journey where we had to go across a river and we had to pay someone to take us across. Um, and you know, you pay once you get to the other side. So the retinue went on, but the queen stayed behind to, you know, sort out that. And I saw her kill him. And I respected her more because mm. he looked like a spy. Because fuck that guy. Mm -hmm. 
And I felt like, you know, she she did it not just for her own protection, but also for the protection of everyone that was with her. Mm -hmm. mm, dark. Dun, dun, dun. Mm -hmm. There's a false rumor about me and the queen back at the royal court. What is it and how did it start? Well, that's that's pretty straightforward. The false rumor, and it is false, is that me and the queen are lovers. Uh, because we have spent a lot more time together, again, talking about the future, which nobody at the court really does. Um, and it started almost immediately after um, after she brought me back to court from our, our voyage where I saved her. Um, she elevated me to court status. Mm. Um, and I'm not really ingratiating at the court so much with everybody else. So... Um, you know, when you're outside of that bubble, people tend to make stuff up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there was that time where you went in her bed chambers as well, closed door. Yep, that one, that one time. Mm -hmm. Oh, all it took. The queen is under attack. Do you defend her? Uh, absolutely. Yes, I'll, I, I defend the queen, and either we both live on this thing, or at the very least, I make sure the queen lives, and if we both die. We both die. Uh, yes, I defend her. With poison. With poison. <laughs> it doesn't say how the queen is under attack, so it easily could be poison. Yeah. Well, you know, it could be poison. I could, like, dip my dagger in as well. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. I feel like you're going to protect her to death. Um, I do protect her, yes. Hmm. I, uh, I launch myself at the unknown foe. Mm-hmm. Um, yes okay and then that is the end the frost shepherds have arrived <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. that was the frost shepherds the whole time that's right um, those pesky frost shepherds cool. cool yeah well that was that was for the queen what'd you guys uh well kendall uh, sarah you and i have played it before but kendall what'd you think no i like it it's um it is definitely very much a card based um card based quiet here mm -hmm. um it's a lot more small scale too which i like um you don't have to build the whole world with the map and mm -hmm. the dangling plot threads that like you never never get to resolve because reasons like it's very compressed i guess um and i like that i like that it's more small scope even though it or more small scope even though it could be a big scale um i like it yeah, when, when I was talking to Sarah about this the other day, that's why every time I make a reference back to the quiet year, I seriously hesitate to say that it's like a stripped down or simplified or cut down. Yeah. It feels like it's a more honed yes. the quiet year and not in a bad way. And the other thing I really like about it too is that the quiet year tells you that you're supposed to focus on the community. There yeah. may be individual people that come up, uh, and, but, but they're not the... They're not the focus. The the, the, yeah. the individuals are not the focus in the quiet year. It's about the community and the groups and the people that make up those groups. And for the queen is incredibly personal. Every question is personal. It's how do you feel about this thing normally with the queen? And it's um, so cool. For the second time playing this, how much setting just the picture provides us right up front. And, yep. and then how, you know, again, like with a good group like this is we yes and our way through it and just build this whole setting on some very personal questions. Like we're at the end and now we have a really good sense of, of what the queendom is like, who the queen is, who we are, how we fit in that, other people around it, you know, just by asking and answering very personal questions, which is, I, I think it's, the more I play this, the more I like it. Yeah, no, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. How, how about I, you, I like this time we had a little more time and we were able mm -hmm. to flesh out just our, our characters and the queen mm -hmm. specifically because we didn't really get into the queen so much last time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We only did what, like I think 15 cards or something last time. It was pretty, yeah. it was pretty short. We're over in a half an hour. This one we did was, let me check again. So if I do a recall, uh, we played 36 cards before the queen is under attack and there's still nine more that are unplayed. So that was, nice. it's a good chunk. 
I feel like this was this was really good. And I would still feel good doing a full deck, like slapping this card at the very bottom and then just running it out that way. I don't I thought it was good. Like the more the more I play it, the more like you know, the more cards that come out, the more questions I want to see answered because it's just giving yeah. more and more context, which is cool. I like it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel I also like it. Um, for the most part, the, the we, you know passing was minimized, unless it just really didn't fit the character that you're building. Like, you know, we answered some hard questions for our characters too, mm -hmm. um, and and we didn't pass on like we didn't and have, have, have to x out any of the questions. Like we were still able to make that fit in the fiction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I almost xed out when you started to go into you know, people getting, you know, trapped in walls and suffocating them to death and stuff. I was like, oh, that's getting a little, <laughs> I was like, we're just, yeah. going... <laughs> you know, I, I was, I was like, oh, if he continues, I'm just going to, I'm just, oh, I think we can stop now. I think we're good. We get, we get the point. <laughs> yeah. But, but on the passing, I, I don't think any of us passed when it was a question we didn't want to answer. It was more of a, more interesting. yeah, I want to see you answer this kind of a question. Yeah. Like, yeah, I could totally answer it. But with the context that you've given with your character, I want to see what that answer is because that's going to change things, which I thought was really cool. So I like that. Awesome. Any last thoughts before we close out for, for this one? I love that while we have the demon queen, she really wound up being a softie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there was some good stuff there. You know, what's funny is that um, it wasn't until Kendall started talking about, you know, warfare and battle that, that I even noticed the armor. Like I didn't even, it didn't even, it didn't even grab me. I was more focused on like the eyes and the horns. That's, that's yeah. what was grabbing me. And then when you mentioned that, I was like, Oh yeah, she's wearing armor. Like, yeah, this is, yeah, this is like a battle queen. Well, it's that picture is very subtle, like the shading and everything. It really does suck you into the eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the detail, depending on if your eyes focus, especially maybe it's just like looking at the screen versus the print picture of it might be a little different. But, oh, that's true. Um, you know, the definition of it could, be, could maybe get a little lost. Yeah, because there's all red in the background and then the whole background is red, too. So it focus. It yeah. makes you, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. I didn't notice that that's how much I was focusing on the eyes as a detail, just because that's the one thing that pops out among all of the red. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's cool, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think for me, the more the more the more we play this game, the more the more I like the the flow of it. It doesn't feel like. It doesn't feel like it drags. Like when I play Quiet Year, sometimes I feel like, are we, are we almost at the end of this season? Are we almost at the yeah. end of it? Like, cause um, I, like, yeah, it's a good question and all, but like, let's move it, let's move it along. Whereas this one never feels that way. I, I'm always excited for the next card because I want to see like, oh, is it going to be something that really just throws a curveball? Um, and there's there's quite a few little curveball questions that come in there that make you go, oh, okay, how does that? You know, how does that make you think about things too? Which is cool. I like it. So the, are the instructions the same no matter what? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, um, and, and, and in the game okay. too, it's the same thing as you just flip through the cards, which is brilliant. I love it. I can see where, I mean, the picture is such a driving force. Mm -hmm. And like some of those pictures, I don't know that I would ever willingly pick. <laughs> but I could see where like, if that was the one that somebody else settled on, mm -hmm. that it would definitely make the story different. You know, Very if you pick so. one of those queens that's like the old, mm -hmm. you know, um, Indian looking queen, um, then then you know you have a a whole different mindset going into the game of what what maybe you might do. This was when we talked about last time too, yeah. where if you pull this one, like you could do a modern for the queen. Yep. It would, you know, in both cases, we went more in this one and the last one, too. We went more fantasy. The one we did mm -hmm. last time was this one. And it was interesting in our short game. Uh, now, albeit it was shorter. And so we didn't get to really get as much meat on the bones on this one. But the the queen itself didn't really in that game give us a lot to go on. Um, yeah. And the queen actually ended up being not the central focus the focus was actually more on the retinue, which was, which was interesting. Um, mm -hmm. So, so yeah, but no, but, but all of these, you know, different, I, I agree with you. Every single one of them just immediately starts you in a different place for great. Where is this going to go? It, it immediately sets context for you to, to build off of. Yeah. 
And then it's just those first couple questions really start to ground things and then you just build from there. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, that was a good game. That's, that's for yeah. the queen. 